So now we go back to the Fourier transform, okay? Now, um, this doesn't help at all, okay? Even though you think that you can uh, normalize psi 2, it doesn't help at all. We still need to go back to the Fourier transform, which is given by this uh, nifty formula over here, okay? The only difference is that now we got psi 1 and psi 3, okay? Which maybe complicate matters a bit, okay? Which I will not go into the technical calculations, but let's just have a two minute discussion on it before we end. Okay, this is the Fourier transform, okay, this e to the ik1x, okay, actually corresponds to the to this solution over here. So we can pick one solution, okay, but now as you can see, I read it as uh, psi1 tilde, we need to actually do the same for psi3 tilde, okay, because psi3 is also the same, it goes to minus infinity. Now, uh, yes, it's split up into two regions, okay, but I'm not too sure about this, but maybe let's just uh, spur some thinking. I may or may not need to change the wave function phi k, okay? Now, our free particle, what we use is, is called the Gaussian wave packet or the Gaussian wave envelope, which is basically another function that gives us the, the amplitude that when we multiply with the solutions, we, they will interfere constructively in a finite region. It might actually work because I suspect is that if we just remove this side too, we will get the same solution as a free particle and hopefully when we carry out the Fourier transform, you know, we get something like a, a, like a bell curve, right? But this time, the bell curve will go from here and meet this point over here and then it will go up here, okay? And meet back to this point over here where basically psi 1 connects with psi 3 and then it will just take its usual bell shape. Now, the bell curve at this point over here between x between minus a divided by 2 and a divided by 2 does not apply because the Fourier transform uh, applies to the solutions which are valid from these two regions, not inside the well. Inside the well, the solutions are governed by psi 2, which we can already sketch out the probability density, which is in fact bounded. So maybe we can use the Gaussian wave packet. Maybe we can use the Gaussian wave packet. Uh, maybe not, okay? Maybe not. Maybe we can use another function, phi k, which would give us something like this. Okay, gives us something like that. Okay, um, well, okay, I'll draw a dotted line. Gives us something like that. Okay, as you can see, again, it's the same, it's, it's bounded, okay, but basically now, we would choose a Gaussian wave packet, which would give us a solution uh, with the wave number k, and its origin is centered at some point over here, x less than a divided by 2. Now, as you can see, uh, this is the peak of our other solution that we might get, okay, at this point, it's also centered at this point over here, okay. But then again, maybe uh, more, both cases are valid, okay, maybe both cases are valid, and maybe this is why it's a good problem to show you that when we carry out the Fourier transform, uh, we are at liberty to choose various functions of this 5k, okay, which we also call the amplitude of the wave packet. So, this is what we have. Solving this, the problem of the finite square potential, get these solutions over here, sketch out the probability densities, know that it's not physical, even though we can normalize the function psi, uh, magnitude of psi 2 squared over here, but we still have to solve with this psi 1 and psi 3. We will do that using the Fourier transform, and based on the function 5k that we use, we will get either some shape which is like this, okay, um, here, centered at these points over here, and then get the same uh, psi 2, psi 2 doesn't change, and back to the function over here, or maybe if we use the Gaussian wave packet, we, may, we might get a function such as this over here, and then oscillate again, and decay such as like that. Now, our last point to note that the continuity conditions play a vital importance because number one, they determine the, the normalizing function, Okay, number two, they uh, determine the, the transmission reflection coefficients. And number three, they also have to make sure that the problem densities do meet at these common points over here. Okay, that's why we get these uh, continu continuous, continuous solutions. Okay, there cannot be any gaps because that will say that, you know, we can't find a probability over there. So anyways, this is what we have. A short discussion about the case where the energy is greater than V0 for the finite square of potential uh, scattering solutions. Okay, so the next lesson will go into the case where energies are less than V0 and we will have all these discrete energy values. Okay, thanks for your time. Thanks.